As I said before, peak oil is really one of the most important issues facing the next generation, and it's almost uncovered in the media. The recent run-up in oil prices in the media, you do see a lot of stories about how that's due to speculation. Well, the oil markets are actually in backwardation, so if speculators were having any impact on the oil price, it would be to draw down the oil price. Uh, the spot price is what's rising, and the spot price is solely due to supply and demand, and the fact that there's really no new oil production coming on the market for the last few years, and increasing demand, that's obviously what's causing the spot price of oil to rise. It's really amazing that lies like this get perpetrated in the media and that everything gets blamed on speculators and there's absolutely no mention of peak oil or the fact that the Federal Reserve continually inflates our currency. Just think about how you would react if the price of gas doubled every four or five years as it's been doing. How would you react? How would you plan for that? That's really a concrete and easy way for anyone to kind of gauge the impact of peak oil on their lives and, and think of strategies uh, to adapt to it. But let me go over a lot of the alternatives to oil, or to conventional oil, because uh, this is really going to be of increasing importance in the future. I'm not an absolute expert on this. Uh, as an environmental engineer and as an oil speculator, I do have to peripherally be um, knowledgeable about oil alternatives, but uh, hopefully I won't make any mistakes too too badly here. One of the first things that people count on to mitigate peak oil is the non-conventional oils, which is the tar sands in Canada and the heavy oils in Venezuela. And there are a lot of reserves of these. The problem is that starting with the tar sands in Canada, in addition to a terrible energy return on investment and an enormous amount of environmental destruction, you can't really gear up production very quickly and it's questionable how much of the tar sands can actually be exploited. Um, it's easy to exploit the tar sands at the surface but once you start mining down uh, at depth, it becomes much more difficult. And the general consensus is that you certainly can't gear up production quickly, and it's certainly not going to overtake the decline of existing oil, conventional oil fields. The heavy oils in Venezuela, which are pretty similar to the Canadian oil sands, um, they're a little bit more economical to exploit if they had been in a, in a stable country, but in Venezuela, they don't even have a stable enough political environment to stop the decline of their conventional oil fields, much less start to exploit uh, expensive types of oil like their heavy oils. So there's really no production of those and, and not necessarily any planned production because you simply have a government and a society there which doesn't allow for the efficient um, extraction of that oil resource. And this is the problem with a lot of oil around the world. There's plenty of oil in, in Africa and Russia, which if it were in a stable, efficient uh, environment, could be exploited, but it simply can't be exploited. The other thing you hear about is shale oil, which really is completely non-viable. Uh, there's no technology that's even close to being able to exploit shale oil, so when people mention that it's just wishful thinking. So the non-conventional oils really, in my opinion, aren't going to come close to making up the gap in the decline of conventional oil production. So next is natural gas. That's probably what the market will move to next because it's the next most efficient fuel and the market basically just runs through fuels as they become less and less efficient. Natural gas um, is wasted a lot right now in power plants but in the future hopefully that won't be the case and you can certainly run transportation on natural gas. So personally I think natural gas will do a lot to lessen the doomsday scenarios that you hear from many people ab about peak oil. There is a great deal of natural gas that isn't exploited. It's currently in Russia and you know if the price went up a bit I'm sure those fields would be exploited. In fact even at the current price uh, many of those fields are planned for exploitation. And even the United States, although North America is probably peaking in natural gas production, we've basically been in a plateau for decades now. So there's quite a bit of natural gas around the world. Certainly it will run out just like oil, but I think it will help to deaden the, the sharp decline in fossil fuels that uh, many people are worried about. It doesn't mean that we can continue our current lifestyle. So next is coal to liquids. Um, coal to liquids is a great technology if you run an efficient society, which we don't. Um, certainly 
coal to liquids is also going to mitigate a lot of the problems related to peak oil, but again, we're not going to be able to continue our current lifestyle using coal to liquids technology. Coal to liquids is basically converting coal into a, a liquid fuel. Nobody really knows what cost per barrel of oil equivalent uh, coal to liquids gives. You, you hear all these estimates of $50 per barrel which I think is nonsense. Um, those estimates are based on a non-inflating currency and really if coal to liquids could produce oil at uh, oil equivalent of $50 per barrel people would be doing it like crazy and they're not. And also there's a lot of difficulty with ramping up coal production so I don't see coal to liquids as, as being able to save our current lifestyle but uh, it will hopefully save us from mass starvation at least. After these technologies is nuclear and long term I think nuclear is, is probably what uh, the world will be running on for quite a while. You can with nuclear take a lot of the coal burning and natural gas burning power plants offline and use those fossil fuels for, for a better more efficient uh, purposes and also with nuclear you can create hydrogen and, and run transportation on that. Of course there's still a lot of speculation as to how much uranium the world can actually produce and it's something that I haven't looked into in great detail. From what I can tell uh, a lot of people are trying to be pessimistic and saying that the uranium production is going to peak also and I don't really see any evidence of that from the limited research that I've done on this topic although certainly other people may know more than me. Next is the renewable re energy and let's start with ethanol probably the worst possible solution and the fact that the United States is pursuing ethanol as, as some kind of an answer to high oil prices really shows how much trouble we're in politically that we could even consider something like this. It's, it, it's questionable in my opinion whether it even has a positive energy return on investment whether or not you actually use more energy producing ethanol than, than you get from it because uh, ethanol wouldn't survive without subsidies and something that doesn't survive without subsidies has questionable energy return on investment and it's also absolutely terrible for the environment the worst possible thing for the environment because you're displacing a, uh, agriculture basically to the third world and you're basically converting rainforest into into ethanol solar and wind though I, I have a lot more hope for from what I can tell they're certainly very viable and uh, although some people claim they aren't uh, some people claim they don't have a positive energy return on investment I, I don't believe that um, right now they, they can exist in many cases without subsidies. So personally I have a lot of hope for wind power and solar especially as conventional fuels continue to rise in price. I think we'll see a large switch over to uh, wind power and, and particularly solar in some areas. There are other things like um, tidal power, uh, things that we should have been pursuing instead of wasting money uh, trying to steal oil from other people. Lastly, though, one of the most important uh, things related to alternative energy is simple conservation. And this isn't really discussed a lot, but in my opinion, there's an incredible potential for conservation of fossil fuels. It, it, the, the current transportation system is unbelievably inefficient. Homes and, and the heating systems and the design of homes, incredibly inefficient. Also simply learning to make do with less and people are going to have to do this when it becomes economically impossible for them to afford their current lifestyle. So I have great hopes for simple conservation in addition to all the other alternatives to conventional oil. However, in my opinion, we're certainly not going to be able to continue anything like our current lifestyle. And as I said before, just try to consider how you would live if the price of gas and if your heating and cooling bills doubled every five years or so. And if you can't plan for that, you're possibly going to be in uh, a lot of difficulty in the future. It's, as I always say, it's, it's, in my opinion, the most important issue facing the next generation and whether you succeed or fail in life will depend on how you react to peak oil.